One of the other things that private equity groups have become notorious for is I shouldn't say notorious. I think it's just their business model. They mm-hmm. they buy sixty percent of the business, and so they'll throw out a big valuation. Let's just use your fifteen and twenty example. Yeah. Uh, so they'll say, "Hey, we think your business is great. We want to offer you 20. Now, the deal structure, and you get underneath the sheets, is is twelve in cash. You've got to take eight of the twenty and roll it into equity into a new entity. And that equity, you're now a minority shareholder in their new entity that they're going to build other businesses around and potentially create some efficiencies with the, with the idea of selling that new entity and you can make off like a bandit with your second tranche of equity, mm-hmm. so-called second bite of the apple, which is a terribly overused expression. <laughs> the challenge, of course, with that is that as a minority shareholder in the new entity, you're just that, a minority shareholder. At the whim of the private equity group, you have no rights to typically put your shares onto the, the private equity group. And so you're just left. In one instance, we did an interview with a guy named Derek Moran. I, I'll link up to it, the show notes. The guy sold for similar numbers, 20 and 12, I think. I'd mm-hmm. have to go back and listen to it. But the eight that he rolled went to zero because the guy, the, the, the person they brought in to run the company had no idea how to run his business and it all went poof to zero. Um, so that's the knock against... That's one of the challenges, I think, with selling a private equity group. And and I, I'd just be curious to know if you have sort of comments on, on have you seen that? You know, what should entrepreneurs be aware of when it comes to that kind of model? No, I think you teed it up great. I think that happens all the time, just like retrading happens all the time, like rolling equity. That's part of the playbook. And I would say that's neither good nor bad. Like to me, this isn't a black and white, like one thing is the right thing to do and the other is the wrong thing to do. It's just you got to know what you're signing up for. Um, it's a typical risk and reward trade off. And people need to know, like, am I, do I believe that this company is the, this new owner is the white, right one to run my company and hopefully get me more money in the future? Or would I rather just have the full 20 million now from somebody else? Or th- there, there might be an alternative. So your, your hypothetical example, let's say it was 20 in total value, 12 in cash. If somebody comes and offers you 16 million all cash, now you got a decision to make. And neither one of those deals is like better or worse. It's just a trade off. Like, do I want all the cash now or do I believe that these people are going to make it bigger? And, um, so I, I think just being informed about how all this stuff works. And, and from what I'm understanding is you would do the latter. You would go in with an all cash offer. And yeah. It may be lower in, in at first glance, but it, the, the terms may be more favorable. Or it might be the same. Like, you know, right. again, the, to me, the value of the business is the value. And we prefer to be an all cash buyer. Um, and it, you know, that same hypothetical business, we might be also offering 20 million. And then it I, probably is an easy decision. 